Hello, my blue collar scholars. We're back with some more glassware. I know not a lot of people spend this much time on glassware, except for us beverage nerds, right? So when you get into Cicerone or, or Sommier, uh, which I know is a word I can never say properly. I, I don't know, sorry. Um, but glassware is really important. Uh, and we're going to talk a little bit about beer glassware and how that and then, and then correlated a little bit to um, coffee. So I, in all honesty, never thought about glassware when I was just a regular old coffee drinker sitting in my beige cube, just putting it down. Um, the only thing I really cared about was comfort in my hand, because, you know, like if you've had it, if you're sitting there for a long time and it hurts those knuckles, that's about the only thing I ever cared about. Uh, or I wanted it to stay hot for a long time. Um, but then once I started my Cicerone certification, um, or to be a certified beer server, let's not confuse the term, sorry. Started that last year. Um, it was a journey. It was a fantastic journey. But one of the things that I got out of it was the importance of glassware. And glassware has kind of a, a twofold uh, value. One is tradition. Right, so beer is a beverage that has long, long traditions. And because of that, there are certain styles of glasses that go with certain styles of beers. Now, can you can you cheat and throw everything into a shaker glass or like your standard pint glass? Sure, you know, but part of it, there, there's a lot more to it. And there's reasons why they have them based on the different types of beers, but a lot of it has to do with tradition. So one, this is just going to be just an example, right? So this is a mug that I got from Disney World at Epcot. I know. And uh, this is actually a Pilsner glass. Um, this is a traditional German Pilsner. The way that it's shaped, it comes, it's kind of straight up, kind of bulges out and then comes in. Why is this one this shape? Part of the reasons is as you bring it out, but then they pinch it back in and it's part of it is for the head. So a lot of traditional German beers, which a Pilsner is, they care a lot more about foam and head than we do here. And so a lot of the times when you see them pinch at the top, it's actually to create head and foam. So, uh, but a lot of it has to do with tradition. You can do that in a million different shapes and there are literally a million different types of glasses. Uh, but this is just, this is the Pilsner shape we see uh, most commonly, and this is the one that I probably use most commonly in my house, uh, is this pint glass. Uh, this is kind of disgustingly dirty, if I'm gonna be honest with you, um, which is important. Beer is another, so quick side note, cleanliness next to godliness. I believe that. Um, and beer is one of the best giveaways like if your glass is dirty you can see that the glass is dirty because there'll be like bubbles all stuck to the side a really perfectly clean glass with a nice poured beer uh, that's cool just like the bubbles will just kind of appear out of nowhere if it's dirty you can see it's all like stuck to everything um this one uh not perfect probably need to check my dishwasher uh most people don't use their beer glasses in dishwashers back to the point this is a Nonic class. Um, it, I think it's an, a pub, English pub glass. Um, mainly the, the key is that it's got this little bulge here. So it goes up just like a regular standard pint glass. Then it kind of bulges out. And the thing is, is so that when it falls, um, it will hit that bulge and keep the rim from nicking, thus a no nick. But Secondly, you know, there's the little ridge so that it's easier to hold because as condensation happens, you drop your glass. Um, from what I was reading, nobody knows what came first, you know, the clumsy beer drinker or, or bartender or the style of glass, whatever. One thing that this has that's a little bit different than your standard shaker, the, the like smooth pint glass that's super heavy at the bottom, you know, that we all used to think like, oh, this is a good pint glass. Um, one, it's not that heavy. It is weighted at the bottom, but it doesn't have the like inch of glass like we're used to. And secondly, this one does have just, ugh. Um, I'm gonna wash this glass again, not gonna lie. It does come out just a little bit, this, this little bubble. So a lot of these things here actually play a role in, um, with the carbonation. 
and it'll pull out head or it'll open it up and cause it to be more effervescent. Um, and you'll see those, there'll be glasses that really open up at the edge. Um, and the reason why they want that is because of the carbonation and the carbonation, you wanna open up carbonation so that it basically just shoots uh, flavor up into your nose. Um, and carbonation does that automatically. So um, as you open this up, it just shoots right into your nose. You're smelling it as you take your drink. Um, this, these go way up over your nose. It's clear so you can see that. And that's really what you want. You want to be able to smell while you're drinking. Because remember, if you had to, if 100% was happening between your nose and your mouth, <clears throat> it's like 60 to 5, 70% is happening in your nose and like 30, 40% in your mouth. Okay, so your tongue is not as sophisticated as we think. Your nose super much is. How did that information from learning that about beer affect me with my coffee drinking? So one, um, let me get my different mug. Clear, one, again, how you hold it plays a key, right? So this little ridge helps, it makes it comfortable. You don't have to like grip it. You can just kind of let it hold, it's comfortable. Same thing, your handle. Comfort is important. You wanna be able to have a good grip. Again, you see how high you can get this thing up where your nose is? That's what you want. You want your nose to get in there with your beverage because your beverage is gonna, is gonna pour down here, right? So that you're sniffing while you're drinking. Uh, that was one of the biggest things. Now, coffee doesn't have the carbonation, so it's not going to be like shoot rocketing molecules up into your nose. But it is hot, right? So there's steam and those those flavor aroma molecules that are all warmed up, heat and fired up, they're going to surface and they're gonna come up. Just like if you've ever been around somebody who's brewing coffee, it just fills the whole area with coffee aroma. It smells amazing. Part of that is because it's hot and it's taking that and it's just putting it up in the air through steam and, and energy from heat. So when your coffee is hot, aroma is coming up in that steam. It's not just water, there's water and coffee aroma in there. So um, get your nose up in there, breathe that stuff in, right? And then as you're taking your sip, breathe in through your nose, sip it with your mouth. And if uh, you want to get real crazy, do the little slurp. I know that's disgusting, but um, what a slurp does is it actually just kind of aerates it and rolls it over your tongue. Um, beer, because it's got that carbonation, it's kind of self aerating. So it is opening it up, itself up constantly. Um, coffee, you have to do it yourself. You have to open it up. So slurp, pull it over your palate, air it out get those molecules in um, and you'll have some delicious coffee. So uh, again, drinking, the actual act of drinking has so many layers into it and it's fun uh, in all honesty. And does it make a difference? Yes, it really does. Does it make you feel silly while you're doing it? Yes, it does. And that has been like one of my, my biggest challenges is as I'm getting serious about this stuff, and there's all these people who are and I'm like, ah, that feels weird. I don't like that. I feel nerdy. Like I'm looking around, people are gonna make fun of me. But when it comes down to it, like for me, like my job is to make the best beverage possible for you. And so like, I gotta get nerdy. I gotta not care what those people think and do the things that are necessary for me to be able to analyze and figure these things out so that the beverage for you is as good as possible. And so like I had this really long journey of getting rid of this fear of judgment over being nerdy. Um, and so what I would say is let it go. Like if you're spending $5 for coffee, $8 for beer, do the things that make it the most, that make the experience the best. Uh, and don't feel bad about it. Don't apologize. Get nerdy, slurp, make the noise, sniff it, stick your schnoz right in there and go for it. So with that, everybody, I hope this is helpful. I hope it's blessing you. If it is, please leave some comments. Let me know. Uh, let me know what your favorite glass is. I would like to hear about that. And with that, we will say adieu.